Hello YouTube and welcome back to Heat Geek's consumer series, everything you need to know as a consumer about renewables. And this beginning part of the series is about heat pumps. So this video is about what you ask your heat pump surveyor or installer when they come out to survey your property to see if it's uh, if a heat pump's gonna work and how much it's gonna be. This is your opportunity to pick the engineer you're going to use. This is gonna be where you drill down and find out if they really know what they're talking about. And that is so important in a successful install because installs can be, as you've probably seen, terrible or really good. The difference not being the heat pump, the difference being in how it's installed. Getting a heat pump is a daunting task. It seems like there's a ridiculous amount of information you have to learn if you want it to go as smoothly as possible. Due to the vast differences in installer quality, that probably is absolutely necessary. However, once you've found a decent installer, you should be able to relax, let him crack on with it under your instruction, and that'll make the whole process go a lot smoother. The two main types of companies you're gonna come across are sales-based companies, which employ salesmen, and engineer-based companies, which are typically a bit smaller and are led by what's gonna work and where they can grab the best efficiencies. Our task here today is to give you a list of questions or points that are gonna test your installer so you can figure out who's who, while simultaneously teaching you what you need to know. Most of the former type companies, sales companies, literally send salesmen out to do technical surveys. So that makes these companies quite easy to spot. This first question will give you a very big clue. Ask the person who's doing the survey or giving you a quote over the phone, how long they've been in the industry or what their background is. If they've only been in the industry a year or two or their last job was in a completely different industry, that's probably a salesman you're speaking to, not a technical surveyor. What you need if you're gonna get obtain an accurate quote and look for the best efficiencies is a technical person for a technical survey. If their answer is that they're not a heating engineer and that their role's more sales-based or that they had were involved in a different industry previously, that's a clue that they're not really system specifiers, which is a very complex job and can't really accurately quote your job whilst looking for the best, most efficient way to install it or look for quick wins for efficiency within the property. As part of this, I'd also ask how long has the installation company been around for? They don't have to have necessarily been MCS registered for a long time, but the longer they've been around as an installation company in general, generally the better they've done by their customers and the more they have to lose. The vast majority of cowboy companies that move into heat pumps don't last long. The next crucial question you should be asking is what system temperature are they designing for? I'd actually potentially keep this question quiet and up your sleeve till later on. And here's why. The single biggest thing that affects your heat pump performance and efficiency is the temperature it's designed for. That basically means what temperature your radiators have to be or underfloor has to be when it's minus two to minus three outside in order to keep your house at a comfortable temperature. It's very easy to design a system that works at higher temperatures and give you a nice cheap quote or make money on the job due to the fact you have to replace less radiators. But it's your prerogative to spend more money on radiators that mean the whole system will use less electricity, not theirs. If they provide you a quote without having this discussion about flow temperatures and lower flow temperatures being more efficient, then they could just be trying to do it as cheaply as possible. If you have underfloor heating everywhere and no radiators or it's, and or it's extremely well insulated, you're gonna have low flow temperatures of say 35 degrees anyway. So they won't really necessarily have to have this discussion then. Or another way to attack this same kind of question is, Ask them what scop they're designing their system to. The scop is how much efficiency it has. A scop of two would be rubbish and a scop of five would be amazing. A system designed to a scop of three is not the same value as a system designed to the scop of five. When I say system, that's the important part. Not the box outside, it's the radiators and pipe work. That's what makes the difference between three and five, not the box outside. So once you receive your quote, dig through for this information if it's available and then bring it up with your surveyor or your salesman and just see how they respond because that might tell you something about that company. Okay, so the next clue you're looking out for is that they offer hybrid systems just straight off the bat. If they're offering hybrid systems rather than advising you potentially to replace radiators or they don't use a hybrid as a last resort and the same could also be said for high temperature heat pumps if they're being offered straight away instead of a last resort, this might be a clue. Now let me explain what I mean by that. So what we mean by hybrid system is that the system requires a boiler and a heat pump. 
pipe, not one or the other. So these heat pumps can be added to your current boiler or a boiler can be installed at the same time and it will just turn on the boiler to do the heating once it gets really cold. It's sometimes used as a lazy man's way to just sell masses of units because no real consultation or design is needed to just bash these systems out. If you have a particularly large property or really low insulation levels that there's no way of improving, then a hybrid could be the only solution. But the reality is, if it's below 250 square meters and reasonable amounts of insulation, there is no reason to install a hybrid whatsoever. A good engineer will take you through a whole consultation process, advising you what the different options are, what the different parameters are, where we can improve insulation or radiators to try and make the heat pump just a heat pump system. In fact, actually, sometimes they'll charge for this process, we do, and then they'll deduct this charge off the installation cost if you choose to go with them. During this process, the engineer will advise exactly where you could or should increase insulation and what you should do with radiators, as I mentioned, to move away from a potential hybrid heat pump. As I say, with larger listed properties, that conversation may be a waste of time, it may only be a hybrid as the option, but it should at least be touched on as a possibility. If they're offering a hybrid solution straight away, straight off the bat, before any calculations, before any discussions of flow temperature or radiator sizes, then you're going to pay more, they're going to make more, and you're going to get less grant money. Another point on that same subject, essentially, if they're offering high temperature units as a solution, that's kind of a clue that they're doing the same thing. Any good engineer will first of all be trying to get down your flow temperature as low as possible, which shouldn't need a high temperature unit, before having to resort to a high temperature heat pump. So if you hear high temperature heat pump being a, a kind of panacea where you don't need to worry that will fix any of your issues, be wary. High temperature units do minimize the risk of poor installs because it could be a poor installation, but at the same time, they also reduce efficiency. So next is oversized units. Have you been specified a 16 kilowatt heat pump? The boiler industry has left a huge legacy of oversized heat sources. Rules of thumb haven't been updated and combination boilers have left a mythical thinking that bigger is better. This isn't correct for boilers or heat pumps, but boilers being so forgiving don't really show up the issues this brings quite as easily. In actual fact, the average house is only six to eight kilowatts. That's six to eight kilowatts, whether you're heating with a heat pump, a gas boiler, or hamsters in wheels, the heat requirement is the heat requirement. And the closer we match your heat source to the heat requirement, the higher the efficiency you'll have, especially in the case of heat pumps, because you're going to be reducing cycling, that's switching on and off the unit, and it's going to give you the ability to run at lower flow temperatures. This is specifically important for heat pumps. As a general rule, I'll even go as far as saying the engineer that quotes you the smallest heat pump is the most likely to be correct. Because even with the most in-depth calculations, they're still over-egged by around 10%. Through years of doing longhand calculations and installing boilers and heat pumps that display the live output in harsh conditions, we can say this quite confidently. Also, remember that although engineers say they've done heat loss calculations, the in-depthness of their heat loss calculations can vary hugely. If your surveyor hasn't measured every wall, every window, every door, looked at your loft insulation depth and inquired about cavity wall insulation, and measured every single radiator in the property, they haven't done a heat loss calculation. Just taking down the notes from the building for the heat loss calculations alone should take one to two hours of walking around your property, excluding time talking to you. If you get to the installation stage of a contract and no one's still been around and done this, abandon the contract immediately. If you're questioning the size of a unit required, you could use a system like Veritherm Offer. They've got a service where they place a sensor inside and one externally. They put a known heat source inside. They ask you to leave for one night and they measure the actual heat loss of your property. And I'll drop a link in the description below or look for our how to size a heat pump or how to find out our heat loss video. And lastly, are they a heat geek? Or can they prove competence in hydronic design? What I mean by that is the understanding of low flow temperatures and how to best connect the system. At the time of recording this video, there's only one low temperature heating design course available, and that's the Heat Geek Heating Mastery course. There are smaller two day courses on the way, but the Heat Geek course would take weeks to complete in person, but it's online. Check out our map where you'll find engineers that have gone through an extremely in-depth course that's difficult, which is also not just a pay to pass or A to D answers. This alone sets those installers above the rest by showing their passion for the trade and attention to detail. Outside of something like this course, you probably just have to take their word for it. So quick recap. First of all, 
How long have they been an installer for or in the trade? And how long has the company been around for? What system temperature are they designing for? Are they offering a hybrid solution or a high temperature solution without looking at other potential alternatives? Have they quoted you a higher output unit than the other quotations? Or are they a heat geek or can they prove competency in hydronic design? If you found this informative, give the video a thumbs up. If you want more information like this to help guide you through your journey through renewables, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell and you'll get informed next time we release one.